After a nine-year hiatus, Christopher Paolini, author of The Inheritance Cycle, has come out with an adult science fiction novel, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. In the appendix, he wrote a several-page description of how faster-than-light technology works in his universe, which I flipped to immediately because, of course I did. So today, we are going to talk about how to go faster than light without allowing backward time travel and without breaking known science. In our very first video, we talked about methods of faster-than-light travel. We had space warping, topological shortcuts, which include but are not limited to wormholes, and hyperspace. We're going to add instantaneous transmission to that, which I left off the original list because in order for it to make sense, a lot of well-grounded things about known science would have to be wrong. But in science fiction, everything is on the table. And finally, our topic for today, tachyon transformation. A tachyon is a type of hypothetical matter that can only go faster than light. This is opposed to normal matter, which can only go slower than light. If tachyons exist, we might be able to jump to a faster than light state by transforming our matter into tachyonic matter. This would cause our velocity vector to transform into a corresponding faster than light vector, which is what to sleep means when it talks about going in a straight line along a right angle. So how does this prevent us from going back in time? Well, it doesn't. Not yet. Here's a recap for why faster than light travel in general allows time travel. Suppose we take a faster than light trajectory forward in time, that is diagonally upward on the diagram. For this same trajectory, there are equally valid reference frames that have it pointing diagonally downward, faster than light, backward in time. When we reach our destination, we turn around and we decide to go back to where we started, taking another faster than light forward in time, upward sloping trajectory. And when we get back to where we started, we arrive before we left. You may look at this and say, there's some cheating here. No matter what reference frame we choose, one of the paths is sloping downward. But that's the thing about space-time being relative. It doesn't matter. Upward sloping, downward sloping, it's relative. The line that we think of as now doesn't exist. Or rather, any flat space-like trajectory is an equally valid slice of now through the universe. Crossing the light barrier doesn't just open these trajectories, it opens all of these. To prevent backward time travel, there has to be some kind of barrier, a set of trajectories that remain the same when the rest of space-time is relative. In special relativity, that barrier is the light cone. To sleep adds a new boundary by introducing a new type of particle, the TEQ. This particle has a maximum speed that is much higher than the speed of light. So in addition to the light cone, there's the TEQ cone, which is the true upper boundary. This still hasn't solved the problem though, because like now slices, the TEQ cone would be relative. Never fear, however, for there is a solution. In the appendix, it says it is possible to have a velocity of zero in subluminal space. And in explaining this, it invokes the reference frame of an outside observer. These statements make no sense in special relativity. But if they are meaningless, then why include them in the technical manual? The answer must be that in the fractal verse, they do mean something significant. And what they mean is that there is an objective reference frame. The TEQ cone is relative, but there's only one of them. And the reference frame in which the TEQ cone is balanced in all directions is the reference frame where the velocity is zero, according to this outside observer. In this reference frame, there is a one-to-one -one map between all slower-than-light trajectories and all faster-than-light trajectories within the TEQ cone. This map is not relative. It's objective. Thus, if you are in a boosted reference frame, it may appear that you are traveling backward in time faster than light. 
but the TEQ cone prevents you from going on a shallow enough trajectory back to end up where you started before you left. And that is how to travel faster than light without allowing backward time travel and without breaking known physics. There must be an objective boundary between future faster than light and past faster than light. In order for this boundary to exist, there must be a reference frame in which being stopped and being in motion is objective, not relative. If you have ideas for other options, let me know in the comments. And if your arguments convince me, we may do a future video on it. If you want to help move society toward a bold spacefaring civilization, then why not consider supporting free educational content like this on Patreon? It's easy, and with enough support, I'll be able to treat this channel like a job and get a new video out every week. You can also listen to To Sleep in a Sea of Stars for free with a 30-day trial of Audible via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.